Hello and welcome back to another episode of Stu's Reviews. Before we begin, if you find today's video of any help at all, don't forget to return the favour and hit that subscribe button. I'm currently on 14,981 subscribers, which is halfway to my 2019 goal of 30,000. So hit that subscribe and help me hit that goal. But today, we're going to take a look at this. The Amazfit Verge. And I've been so excited to test this one. I've been waiting for a while to get my hands on one of these. After all, I've tried nearly every other Amazfit device, but I have a feeling that this one is going to be super special. It's got a 33mm fully round display made from 3rd gen Gorilla Glass, and the body is a little on the thick side at 12.6mm, but it needs to be to pack the punch that it delivers. The red accents are a nice touch, and it makes it stand out from the crowd. On the rear, it's got an optical heart rate sensor, but internally also has an accelerometer, gyrometer, geomagnetic sensor, air pressure sensor, ambient light sensor, and a GPS module. This is all running from a 1.2 GHz dual-core processor and a 390 mAh battery that gives it up to five days of real-world use. It's IP68 rated 2, meaning it's water resistant but not waterproof, so isn't recommended for swimming. This watch is good looking, but the real beauty is when the display is on, and this watch features a beautiful AMOLED display, which I'll talk about more very shortly. So let's start off by talking about the style. Ultimately, it's a bit of a one-trick pony when it comes to style. Currently, they only offer two different colours. They offer this one, which is like a grey-black colour, and they also offer a white version. I think both look okay, but you're a little bit limited when it comes to customizability because... You can change the strap. It's got a quick release thing on the bottom here. So you can pull this and take the strap off like this. I can't do it because I'm completely inept. There we go. So it comes out like that. But the straps are quite unique. They're not like a normal watch strap. So customizability options, you are a little bit stuck. And as well, when you use non amazement Verge straps, I don't particularly think it looks very good. Have a look at this. This is what that looks like. So you can see that it doesn't look the best, I believe. But you know what? Each to their own. I've got to put this back in now. I would say, though, that the strap they have included is very, very good. On the inside of the little, um, I don't know what you call this, restraint for your strap, there's a little nodule that sits nicely in here. So it is very, very firm on your wrist, and it's not going to come off very easy at all. So that is a big bonus. The best bit about the style, though, if we take out the little bits that I don't like is the fact it's got an OLED display. So let's take a closer look at that. It is just brilliant. And when you've got watch faces like this that have true black on, it just makes that color and the screen and the details just pop. Now the watch faces, this is pretty interesting. So unlike a lot of manufacturers, with the watch faces on Amazfit devices, you have a huge amount of customizability. And I don't mean from the stock uh, watch faces, but I mean the fact that you can install your own watch faces. And there are literally thousands to download. And my favorite website to use is amazefitwatchfaces.com, which I'll leave a link in the description below so you can check that out yourself. But let's just have a quick look at how easy it is to install your own watch face. Firstly, you're going to need to plug the Amazfit Verge in. By the way, it's not the most beautiful looking charger and in fact it's actually quite awkward but forgetting that fact plug it in and plug it into your computer then what you need to do is go to amazefitwatchfaces.com and you also need to download android file transfer as well so that you can move the files from your computer to the watch once it's plugged in you'll see all the files on the amazefit watch 
appear in the Android file transfer app. Now, all we need to do is download a new watch face. So if we have a look on the watch faces available, there's loads and loads of stuff, all developed by different developers. Uh, you can get really nice ones, such as, I don't know, lions or standard watch faces. You can get ones that look like other brands as well. But there's a huge variety of different watch faces, including this one, which shows a bunch of exercises between two people. I personally prefer anything that uses black as the main color, because that really makes the OLED display look a lot nicer. Anything with a colored background, I think looks okay, but I just prefer to have that OLED really, really pop out with color. Once you've found a watch face that you like the most, all you need to do is click on that watch face and then hit the download button just on the left underneath the actual uh, picture itself. You'll get given the option to download something called a WFZ file. No idea what that is, but I'm guessing it's watch face ziz watch faces i don't know who knows but that is the file type that you need to download to put onto the watch now once it's downloaded all you simply do is drag that file into the watch face folder on the amazfit verge and then done when you go back into the watch you'll be able to find that particular watch face so that you can select it and use that in future believe me if you get one of these you'll thank me for that tip now it's all very well and good talking about how beautiful that display is but let's talk about the actual functionality of the os on here now the os is xiaomi's own version of kind of an android wear type uh, device but i've always thought they did quite well it's the it's very very similar to the amazfit stratos which i have done a review of and i'll leave a link up there for that obviously it's a different display so it looks a bit different and also it's a much snappier device as well due to the bumped up specs. But let's have a look at how it works. So there's a couple of ways to wake the watch. First of all, you can either raise the wake or you can press the button on the side and that should unlock it as well. At the moment, it's a low power display because you did raise the wake. But the moment you press this button here, it wakens to full brightness. Now to change the watch face, dead simple, just hold in the middle like this. You've got access to a few different watch faces on here. You may have noticed I installed that lovely one here, which is the uh, couple's exercises, which I found quite useful. Um, but there's a few different options available. Some of these are stock ones, but I've installed a few myself. Not this one, because that's horrible. Let's go back to a different one. Let's go back to a nicer one. I mean, this one's quite funky. There's a lot going on on this one. So there is really quite a lot of options for different uh, watch faces and like i said the options are limitless now the actual software itself if we go on here and swipe right this is where we get access to the bits of information such as health heart rate sports sleep this is basically giving you an idea of what your history has been like in terms of um stats now going back we we'll swipe down we've got lots of different apps on here things like music control phone control your weather uh, alarm find phone now one thing i would say is that it is a very snappy watch very very snappy much more so than the amazfit bip and the amazfit stratos uh, the stratos this is most like i guess but this is a much snappier operating system than the stratos or it, or it definitely runs the operating system a lot better now I can actually have these as widgets as well. So if I choose through the app to have these as a widget, when I swipe right, I'll get access to a larger version of it. So if I actually tap on that there, oh, there's a text from Sam. Should we see what that said? Now to see what that said from Sam, let's have a look. Let's go back. Nope, swipe up instead. And there we are. He liked Amazfit Verge review coming tonight. So that was the notification. And you can see in here, by the way, all the app icons are displayed. Not, not every single one, but most app icons are shown on the Amazfit's operating system, which I think is a really nice touch and just makes it a little bit better than many, many other fitness trackers and smartwatches out there that generally can't show the icons. So that's quite a nice little touch. Uh, but yeah, overall, the operating system itself is very snappy and I've been very, very impressed with it overall. Uh, there isn't really anything to criticize about it 
it's just designed very well indeed. Moving on, as always, a fitness tracker or smartwatch is always only as good as the app it comes with. Now, the Amazfit Verge uses something slightly different to the BIP. It uses the same one as the Stratos, which is the Amazfit app. Now, when I did my original review of the Stratos, I thought the app was okay, it wasn't anything super special, but they have updated it a bit and it does look and feel and function a bit nicer. So in here, just to give you an overview of how it looks, you can tap on different bits of information, such as steps here, and I can see my steps today, or I can see my weekly steps or monthly steps. And if we go into something like my heart rate, I've got constant heart rate turned on on this, which does reduce battery life, but it means that I'm always getting my heart rate through to the app. But I can go through history here. Obviously, you can see yesterday I didn't wear it, and then 27th of May, it was 83 average. 27th, I didn't wear it. 25th was 89. 76th on the 24th. 23rd is 79. 57th on the 22nd of May, I must have been very relaxed on that day. But overall, it gives you a good insight to your health history. Now, one good thing I quite like about this is you can see a really good visualization of your previous activities. Now, this has GPS built in. So if I tap on this activity just here, for example, I can see just a very, very short walk that I did this morning with the dogs. And I can basically look at how fast I was going, which parts I moved the quickest, which parts I stopped. And overall, it gives me some really decent information about that walk. So for usage, if you're running or training outdoors, it really is quite a useful piece of kit. I think if I was to come to some sort of opinion on the app, I'd say it's nothing super special, but nor is it something that's gone hideously wrong it does a good job at what it's meant to do and it doesn't have lots of flashy images and text and all that nonsense i think it does a good job more than you'd need to connect to a watch let's stop singing its praises for just a second and let's talk about where i think it's gone wrong the first thing is music now you can control your phone with this. So if, for example, I've got my phone playing music, I can skip track or pause it directly through the watch, which is a nice addition. Now you can store music directly on this as well and stream to Bluetooth headphones. However, that has to be in MP3 form. And I don't remember the last time people used MP3s. I mean, don't you have to download LimeWire or something to get an MP3? Most people use things like Apple Music or Spotify or even YouTube to stream their music. It's very, very rare that people actually have MP3s that they can put onto devices nowadays. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm sure there's somebody watching this right now going, Oh, I use them religiously! Well, that's fine. You can be part of the cult of MP3, but I'm not, and I don't think many people are. But actually, you know, to put files on there, it's quite straightforward. You just have to get hold of the MP3s to put them on. Um, I mean, you saw earlier me putting the watch faces on. Dead easy, really straightforward. It's just the file type, the MP3, some of you may struggle with. The next thing would be the sound. Now, the sound itself is okay. It's not too bad. It is a little bit tinny at some times, but when you're using it to take a phone call, it doesn't really work that well. Also, I found, especially when you do FaceTime. So the other week, for example, I was FaceTiming someone and I'd chosen to take the audio through the phone. Now, when you flip the camera around in FaceTime on the iPhone, it decides to reconnect the audio each time to the watch. So you've then got the audio coming through this and going through that, and it's all a bit of a faff. And I think doesn't work that well. Ah, and another criticism is that at the time of review, at this moment in time, which is May 2019, you can't get Alexa on this in the UK. Now, if you're watching this in the US, you can actually get Alexa on this. So you can use it as a voice assistant, which I think is incredible. But you just can't get it in the UK at the moment, which is both disappointing and miserable, very much like the UK is. So America, you quids in with that one. 
but you may be watching this and Alexa is available in the UK. And if you are, apologies. I guess the best place to check whether it is or not is on the Amazebit website. So we've spoken about some things that I think they've done very well on. And we've spoken about some things that I think they haven't done so well on. But the real question is, what does it cost and how much do you pay for this device? Well, it depends on where you're looking. So let's have a quick peek. Generally speaking, it ranges from about 100 to 130, depending on if it's on offer or not. But as usual, guys, I will leave a link in the description below so you can check it out for yourselves. On to my final thoughts and conclusion of the Amazfit Verge. First of all, is it a good fitness tracker? Absolutely. Is it a good smartwatch? Absolutely. And is it worth the price that it's asking for? Indefinitely. I think that this is an incredible piece of tech for the price. And if you are looking for a really nice looking smartwatch slash fitness tracker with an OLED display at a cheap price point, I think the Amazfit Verge is an absolute no-brainer. And if you're used to any form of Amazfit device, I can promise you this one will not disappoint. And that concludes today's review. Guys, remember, if you found today's video of any help at all, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. And I'll see you back for another episode of Stu's Reviews soon. Before you go, consider supporting me on my Patreon page by clicking here. It'll give you some great discounts on stuff I've reviewed and helps me to continue doing reviews. If you want to see some fun stuff, click here to see the highlights of Stu's Reviews. And as a friendly reminder, click this button to subscribe.